I want to greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are so happy to be in the house of God. We are so happy about the preliminaries. And also to those that are in diaspora. diaspora. That are also following what we are doing. Our prime goal is to contend for the faith. Our secondary goal is to contend for the faith. And our final goal is to contend for the faith. Because once the faith is delivered, it's cast in concrete. Nobody can change that. Can we say amen to that? Amen. That is why no sooner had the church, the, the, the church been founded. And After the church was founded. And the, and the church was growing. The first generation of preachers before they were even gone they were already writing to the churches to contend for the faith because as soon as the Holy Ghost came the Antichrist spirit came as well when they came out of Egypt they thought Egypt was left behind but in among them there were other people who had come out of Egypt but Egypt had not come out of them they still wanted to go back so in the early church they had a similar situation where people among them who were supposed to be brothers but did not understand the message they were still trying to find their way of going back and they became a nuisance until Peter wrote against them. It was not an easy thing for Peter to write against people that were called brothers. It was not easy for John to write a letter condemning people that were supposed to be brothers. And also Jude. Jude. Jude had to write to say I wrote to you that you contend for the faith. It was not easy for Paul to write and say after my departure they shall come grievous wolves not sparing the sheep. He even said even among yourselves shall arise men wanting to draw away disciples. They will be speaking foul things because they were ordained to that condemnation. Can we say amen to that? Amen. Today, the subject is the unchanging program of the unchanging God. Subject program is Uh, we are going to open to Revelation chapter 5. If we start from verse 1, remember now we are at the end of the Bible. We are now in the book of Revelation. All the other books are gone. We are in the last chapter. The last book and you find here something says and I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed the seven seals hallelujah hallelujah it is a vision that saw when he was on 
Patmos Island. And he was told to communicate this vision to the seven churches in Asia Minor, which was representing the seven church ages. Can we say amen to that? Amen. God has his way of dealing with Jews. He gave them seven feasts. And those seven feasts were prophetic. They were speaking of a story of redemption. Can we say amen to that? Amen. And then God speaks to the heathens. He gave them the four uh, the four empire, empires. The four kingdoms. Starting with Babylon. And ending up with Rome. It is the unchanging program of God. It cannot be changed. Then to the Gentile church, which was represented by Ruth back there, represented by Naomi, by uh, Rahab, he gave us seven church ages. So when you read this, there are many churches that have grown and filled the world, but they know nothing about this program. And they think they are all right. Let's see if they are all right. Here the second scripture says, And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? When you hear that people have failed in school, it's not that they did not know. They did not know what was relevant. People can know so much about the rabbit, about the owl, about the baboon, but that's not algebra. algebra. Can we say amen to that? Amen. So I want our people that are following the message to know what this message is all about. Is it just God feeling sorry for the people? Trying to help the people? Far be it. God is fulfilling his program that he announced in the book of Amos. He says God will not do anything without revealing it by his servants, the prophets. So the whole issue God is, is following the program that he announced by his servants the prophets the coming out of Israel out of Egypt was not because they had suffered but because he had declared it in Genesis 15 to his servant Abraham. There's been many genocides. There are many genocides going on right now. There are many animals killing each other. God does not interfere. He just leaves it. So you must watch the program of God. Not watch what is going on in the world. Watch the program of God. Why am I saying this? I've seen people that are many years in the message. But they have no idea. They have no idea what the message is. 
and the result, they can end up introducing to their people as a prophet. A divorced man who married a divorcee and is not even a message believer, hoping that he can bring revival to the message. This message Shokorino. can revive itself. There is enough power. There is enough promises to produce every promise of God to answer to every need that every believer has. Mm. Mm. Amen. This is what I am here for. This is my calling. This is what he called me to do. And that's what I'm doing. To make people know this message. And then contend for it. Why am I saying all this? Let's just, say, let's just pray and sit, so can sit down. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, Eternal Jehovah, Sovereign of the Universe, the one and only true living God, we come into your holy presence. Lord, there are many churches today. There are many gatherings today. There are millions that are gathered under certain auspices. There are Hindus. There are Buddhists. There are all kinds of people that are lost. But you'll just leave them like that. But somewhere there, there is a divine program. Lord, we believe here is what you are doing because it's according to your word. Lord, the Bible tells us that the angel spoke to Mary about the birth of Jesus. And that was done to fulfill that which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. Not because people had prayed for a savior, but because God had promised it. Lord, we are looking at your promises. We do not come with our needs, with our wounds, but we come with your promises and say, it is written. This is your promise. For scripture cannot be broken. Lord, our heavenly father, may you visit your people through the message of the hour. May you vindicate the message of the hour once more to make people know that this message was not the message of a man, but it was the message of God, not to just a generation, but to all the people that are on earth today and even those that are departed for, before us. Heavenly father, may you have your own way in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Listen, God brothers. Good. Sometimes I feel so sorry for men that are supposed to be teachers. But they need someone to teach them. Paul saw it in the Hebrews. He spoke about it in Hebrews chapter 6. He said the time had come when you must be teachers. But you need someone to teach you. What had happened? What had happened? They failed to catch it. We want you to catch it. What this message is all about. Amen. Amen. We have read from Revelation chapter 5. We read one scripture there from verse 1. That there was, there was a book. book. Can we just read that again? I want you to follow these things. This is, this is verse 1 of chapter 5. John is writing what he saw. And he says, I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and without. And on the back side, sealed with seven seals. Ah, that is number one. Number two, then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals thereof. There is now an advert. 
Number three, verse, verse number three. Ah, verse three. And no man in heaven nor in earth neither under the earth was able to open the book neither to look thereon and I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book neither to look thereon Verse 4. And I wept much. He really wept. Like what you do when a close relative has died. Why was he man, this man weeping? What was his problem? Why do people not weep today when they read that? Because it means nothing to them. And I wept Amen. much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much but I, Papa, ah, just catch the lion Shumba. of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, David, has prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood the lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And here is a little key there that is dropped. The seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. These are not seven winds. These are not seven winds. These are seven authentic messages. Seven authentic messages. Seven authentic messengers. To proclaim the program of God. To the Gentiles. But you see, here is the line of the tribe of Judah. 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 What is going on here? If you don't understand what is going on there, you continue to be frustrated. And you say, what is he doing? He says, and he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. He took the book. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and the twenty elders fell down. They fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials. Uh, full of orders which are the prayers of the saints. And verse number 9. And they sang a new song. Saying thou art worthy. To take the book. 
and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us. Do you see now we are talking of redemption there? It has something to do with redemption. That book is the book of redemption. You have redeemed us. Okay, and has redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Do you see it's out of every nation? But I, if you can catch this, I know there's people that have become preachers. But every wind that comes, they go, uh, they if a mad man in Ivory Coast says, I'm a prophet, they go on the plane and go there and come back. What is that? Because they never understood. If a man comes from Ghana and he spends some time in your country to study, to know what names of people are there and so forth, and then comes back as a prophet, a man can come to a country and spend two months there just knowing what is going on and then when he comes back officially he comes like he's prophesying. You must be very careful of all that. A prophet is not there to just tell people their names and their addresses. He is there to pronounce and to announce God's program. A prophet is there to announce God's program. A prophet is there to announce God's program. Let me read a quotation. Are going to wearing a quotation. Uh, Brother Branham here says, I'm and now we find out about the same thing existing today when we know that we are living in the hour that gross darkness is to cover the earth and the people and we find that all these modern achievements a super age and so forth that we are living in is only the sign of gross darkness in the spiritual realm we are in the Lord is here church age where they are just lukewarm they could go to church and people does and it seems to have a zeal to go to church but to know anything about the spirit the time they are living in some of them are as blind as they can be about those things no matter what God would do and how well it would be proved by his word, still they just can't see it. I wonder if it isn't just about like what he said. We have eyes, but we can't see. We ought to look around and see all these things that's happening as a sign that the end is at hand. Because these are the things that was predicted to be at that time. I want you to notice the unchanging continuity of God's word and his works. See, he never changes his program. program he never changes his ways. Just as perfectly 
The scripture is in perfect continuity. Everything that God does is in continuity with what he done. And what he did first, he will do it the second time. The same way. And just to prove it to you, he has made laws in the earth. And he has always given his people a sign before the event happens. Now he has always done it. And he will always do it. Because he is the unchangeable God. I am God, he said. I change not. The way he sets his program at the beginning, that's the way it is in each age. He never changes it. How is that? That's what I call a prophet. Putting people right in the right perspective. So that you know what to expect. What he did is what he will do. Everything is in continuity. With what he ever did, he's not doing a new thing. It is one thing that is continuing from Genesis to Revelation. It is one vision. It is one purpose. It is one God. All the drama, all the songs, and all the parables, and all the visions, they all link up to become one. That is why the visions connect. When we talk about the seven seals, people wonder what is it about. It is about what he has always done. We have read about this book that was in the hands of him that sat on the throne. And he saw the book. After seeing the book, well, he was wondering, what is this? Then there is an advert who is worthy to take that book. What is it all about? It is about Leviticus chapter 25 when he laid out his program his program, let's read Leviticus chapter 25. Leviticus chapter 25. Leviticus 25. We're going to just go on to verse 25. Leviticus. Levitico. Here the scripture says, If thy brother be waxen poor, and has sold away some of his possessions, and if any of his kin come to redeem it, then shall he redeem that which his brother sold. And if the man have none to redeem it, and himself be able to redeem it, then let him count the years of the sale thereof. Uh, and restore the overdue unto the man to whom he sold it, that he may return unto his possession. Uh, But if he be not able to restore it to him, then that which is sold shall remain in the hand of him that hath bought it. 
until the year of the jubilee and in the jubilee it shall go out and he shall return to his possession okay so in the jubilee what was the jubilee? Because God does not change. His laws do not change. He said, land shall never be sold. Whoever he has given it, it is his inheritance. And if for any reason he becomes poor and can no longer use his land and needs food, he might mortgage it. He might, he might let it go. But that is only temporal. The loss is temporal. There is always an opportunity because he is God of a second chance. You must know that God is God of a second chance. If someone has done something wrong, you might write him off. We might write him off. But God has not written him off. You understand that? Why am I saying these things? Because when people understand these things, they don't go to hang themselves. But they will seek a reconciliation. Can we say amen to that? Amen. So according to this book of Leviticus, it was a law in Israel. They were given this law. Are you listening? I want you all to listen. And when this was told them, there were squatters in the desert. They had nothing. There were nothing. The law was not given because there was a situation. But it was given because that's what in God's heart they were going to possess land and they were being told when you possess that land, it may happen that things may not work out well. A man may not be diligent. A man may not have sons. Or he might have rogue sons. There's always people who have unfortunate situations. But by God's will, children must follow the steps of their fathers. Okay. So he says, if that happens, when he can, if, if there is another relative, a close relative, he can come and, and say to the man, my brother, oh, do so much. I have come. Here is your money. We want our field back. He's going to say, but who, you, who are you? He is going to say, I am a near kinsman to him. If another one comes from another family, the man can just say, okay, wait a little bit. And he goes inside and come back with the, with the shambok. And give him a hiding. And say, you are coming here because you see that I got a bargain. 
But if he's a close relative, the whole law of Israel will enforce that. That if it is a close relative, you have to let him redeem. Why was Jesus the lion of the tribe of Judah? Why did he have to come that route? Because without Naomi, there was no redemption for Ruth. If Ruth just wandered from Moab and came in there and said, I want to be redeemed, it was not possible. Because there was nothing to be redeemed in Ruth. The law of redemption, it goes hand in hand with an inheritance that's already in existence. So we Gentiles, we do not have an inheritance in existence. We have nothing. But when we come as a loyal daughter-in-law of Naomi, Naomi. Then we wait. Uh, if the redemption is for Naomi. Uh, because the kinsman uh, is redeeming go. Naomi. Uh, we want you to understand so that. That, that book, uh, book Iroro, is a book of redemption. Book Only Israel can be redeemed. Israel, church, and no but we, As is having it. been Atiri. the roots of today, that loved somebody uh, and became traitors to our own religion, and Ruth threw away her religion and paint her Salvation Army uniform. And she became a traitor. And his relatives did not want to see her. But she said to Naomi, where you go, I will go. Your God will be my God. So we as Gentiles, we have no background of anything but ancestors and witchcraft and whatever things were happening. That's what our ancestors were doing. But by believing this man called Jesus and we love him and we are so loyal until Israel today wonders. Sometimes they say what kind of idiots are these that can love a man that we rejected. A man that was a false messiah and we crucified him and killed him. But they love him. They love him so much that they will die for him. What kind of people are these? It's the power of revelation. Ruth was writing on the power of revelation. Revelation can see the unseen. Her vision could see the situation of Naomi. But it was looking beyond Naomi. She was looking beyond her deceased husband. Looking beyond Naomi. Looking beyond what people say. Those of his relatives, they said, you are going to be rejected out there. They don't want people, they don't want people like you. They even had examples of some women that had gone to Israel. And they were chased like dogs. But they had not come with Naomi. If Rebecca had come to Isaac without Eliaza, she would have been chased. So it is who you come with. Can, can we say amen to that? Amen. So when Naomi and Ruth were finally in the land of promise, Naomi was busy feeling sorry for herself. 
She said, because the day I was born. She, she says, says woe is me. And I misled my husband. And I am the Sirisho. one who put pressure on my husband. To go to diaspora. Now my husband died. And what will I say to his brothers? They are saying, my guru, you are the one that caused it. And the sons died as well. The footsteps of the righteous, they are led of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you don't know the big picture of what God is doing, then you are so miserable. But Paul told us, and he said, For we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, there was Naomi completely defeated. Not even a grandchild. No husband. No son. No grandchild. She came with the Moabites. And those who did not know the mystery of redemption. They were saying, What is that thing? Looks like a certain thing. What's that thing that you have there? She said, I told, I tried to tell her to go back. Oh. So, but she insisted she wants to come here. I've done my best. But what more can I do? After all, she loves me. Sometimes people who love you, they become irresistible. Though they might have some mistakes. But just that can also be a power. And while that was going on, there was a will within the will. They came at the time of the harvest. And it so happened that when they got there, Naomi had to go back to her own place. Naomi And because she is from the tribe of Judah, that's where the family was. So they went there. And there was a noble man who had a big field. And she saw a chance there of going to get something to eat. The sufferings that you are going through today cannot be compared with what lies two days from where you are. It could be the breaking of a new day. For weeping may be for the night. But joy comes in the morning. A new chapter will be opened. You may be going through some a series of rejections. A series of people looking down upon you. And a series of miscalculations. You made miscalculations. And you are busy blaming yourself. Certain things are inevitable because there is a divine program when you have done the best you can leave it there and say Lord what more can I do I'm only a human being I'm only a human being and watch the small wheel the will within the will. It leads exactly to his perfect will. And as she was gleaning, she went through a big test there. When women have no money, they become very vulnerable. They can also be taken advantage of. 
and there's all kinds of offers. There were many reapers in there. And all of them, they saw a vulnerability. So they were offering to see after sundown. Who sort out all your problems? If she had accepted that, she would have gone back to Moab with the AIDS. But because she passed the final test, there is always a final test. There is somebody on his final test. God, will, God is not a sadist that will test you forever. He even knows where to stop. He knows where to stop. Can we say amen to that? Amen. And then in those days of the testing, things were hard. And all of them were joking about her. And some said, let me, let me go and try her. And they went from this angle. And she still refused. Until she made a name. Ah, she had the name. Her character had declared that though she was a Gentile, but she had morals until it until Boaz, who was also watching, there is somebody watching you. That somebody watching you is fighting in your corner. He's behind you. But he wants you to prove whether you are worth what you are trying to be. Just like Job, God was watching as Job was fighting all these battles. From the physical battles to the funerals to the impoverishment and to the torment from his own friends. And yet Job stood in his integrity. He stood, he never changed his confession. And every moment, God was saying, There is my man. There is my man. If you are going through certain things and you are proving your integrity, God is praising you. Can we say amen to that? Amen. And then, finally, Boaz asked, Who is? Then he said Boaz yeah. unto his servant, that was set over the reapers. Do you see this one was a servant? But he had authority over other servants. He was a proven servant. For the hand of the diligent shall bear rule. <laughs> He was now the chief reaper there. And he was now the, the lord of the harvest was now talking to the chief reaper. And he said, whose dam damsel is this? And the servant that was over the reapers answered and said, it is the Moabite damsel that came back with Naomi out of the country of Moab. And she said, I pray you let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and it continued even from the morning until now that she tarried a little in the house. Listen to this. The reapers 
were going in reaping. And she asked can I look for whatever is left out where you have reaped? And that permission was granted. But the easiest thing, the offers that were coming from these other people, they would say, no, I can, I can, I can organize for you. So she, here is a report now. Uh, and in verse 8. And in my eight. Then Boaz said unto Ruth, Here is thou not my daughter. Go not to glean in another field, neither go from hence, but abide ye fast by my maidens. Mm. Now you message believer. You've been told. Don't run, don't do mission trotting. Don't run from field to field. Stay in this field. Clean in here. Go through in there. But we hate that at this uh, other place. Ah, uh, we heard that big things have happened uh, at this place. Mm -hmm. Somebody who does not understand the message. If they hear that uh, Magaya is done ABC. <laughs> You are the foolish of the foolish. That person we are talking about is not even a Christian. Uh, is someone who just sees the Do foolishness of uh, people who call themselves Set down Do and did a project. And are so, to Nigeria. so that uh, these so-called Christians want to follow uh, Nigerians. And they went to Nigeria. And it was given stuff. But Jikuru, the big thing, mano mano zao. Ah, it's just uh, the mix. And an ordinary person, you can say that God cannot hear such a man. Not one prayer of his is heard by God. Ah, was he ever a Christian? If you hide somewhere and that person is praying, you can hear that they cannot even pray. But uh, why do people follow him? Uh, it's not proper people that know the Bible that follow and such. After a while, they, hear, they realize the folly, but then they fear the man. What am I, why am I saying this? He's a Zimbabwean. Mu Zimbabwean. It's a, a child to us. I was preaching this gospel before that one was born. Uh, and preaching the, the gospel. I saw the miracles of God before that man was born. We know how God works. What do we know? What we have read. His program does not change. Our program change. But if somebody is in the message, uh, there are also certain foolish people in our midst. Uh, foolish people. When Saul knew that he was not going to get an answer from God, what did he do? He tried to pray and he realized that his prayer was not going anywhere. The rats were now protesting. 
Ngakonza God cannot just hear anyone. There's got to be a good relationship there. Amen. Amen. When Saul realized that God was not going to hear him, he called his servants and said, I Get me a witch. That's what he said. Then they said, you killed all these uh, soothsayers. She said, ah, but she said, I had someone else somewhere. I was out of Arico. I see, I know Dylan, I, I, she, 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 we might need them. He knew of this other witch of Endo, I was out of Arico, 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 Listen to then that. Saul said unto his servant, Seek me a woman that is a familiar spirit that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said, Behold, there is a woman that has a familiar spirit in Endo. And Saul disguised himself. I wanted to catch something there. Saul disguised himself. And put on other raiment. And he went and two men with him. And they came to the woman. By night. And he said, I pray thee. Divine unto me by the familiar spirit. And bring me him up whom I shall name unto thee. And the woman said unto him, Behold, thou knowest what Saul hath done, how he hath cut off those that have familiar spirits, and the wizards out of the land. Wherefore then layest thou a snare for my life to cause me to die? And Saul swear to her by the Lord Jehovah. Hmm? the Bible brother Branham says a man will fight his way to hell the witch doctor had actually refused the witch but he says, I swear by the Lord. And Jehovah and Dota Rana Banyai. I says, I'm going to talk to Rana Jehovah Banyai. You are answerable to God for everything that you do. He will not open door a panel. There's only one mediator, which is Jesus Christ. The Jesus Christ. Uh, so said, uh, I, I will swear by the Lord. As the Lord liveth, uh, there shall no punishment happen to uh, thee for uh, this thing. Uh, it's bad to uh, backslide. Uh, you eat what you did. What you, did. You, do eat. you go where you used to do what you never used to do, and then you do what you never used to do, then you die. Then you die. The way of a transgressor is hard. Then say the woman, whom shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, bring, up, bring me up Samuel. Samuel. Uh, she ended up realizing that I'm now dealing with a message. Dealing with a message you you swear by by the and now you want Samuel. Uh, I think this is a backslidden message, believe. Huh? And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. 
And the woman spoke to Saul, saying, Why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. I cast it. If you, you are told your name, and Saul was told his name by that witch doctor. But those familiar spirits uh, these familiar spirits they can also say tavamba vamba kwese kwese taona kuti you know they can say ministry akati akati we have gone everywhere you work at the ministry akati education or whatever tashama tavamba vamba kwese kwese we have gone everywhere taona kuti muri musoji you have seen that you are a soldier uri kuta uri kwa Right. You hear me? Here, this man, he didn't know that he was at the end of the road. He was trying to refuse to come to the end of the road. He was told. The king said unto her, Be not afraid. What is what, what so is thou? Uh, and the woman said to Saul, I saw gods ascending out of the earth. And he said unto her, What form is he of? And she said, An old man cometh. And he is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel. And he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself. This is someone who was in the message but not understanding the message. He had even been anointed. But he still did not understand the message. This is why we take so long to make. I don't want to be cheated. Those I don't want to walk with foolish people. They are all over the world. Right. Back to our prophet and his message. To the message against the bridge. Bridge. Part of the seals. Brother Branham had just finished reading about Revelation chapter 5 from verse 1 to 7. Uh, Brother Branham, and we are now on paragraph 29. Uh, paragraph 29, bridge. So here he says, uh, the prophet says here, this seven sealed book is revealed at the time of the seven thunders of Revelation chapter 10. But I just catch that. He says, Why not? This seven sealed book is revealed at the time of the seven thunders of Revelation chapter 10. If you are marking it down, let's turn to Revelation chapter 10. Just a moment. So we will get an understanding before we get into it. Now this is at the end time. For so listen, I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven clothed with the cloud and a rainbow upon his head. If you notice, that's Christ. Christ. See? Because he in the Old Testament was called the angel of the covenant. He is directly coming to the Jews now. For the church is finished. But I, uh, he's that. directly coming to the Jews. Uh, Who is the Jews? Uh, Naomi. Uh, Naomi. 
Naomi after losing her husband. Naomi muchure mwenga rasikirwa nemurugo wake. And two sons. Newana koma na wake babiri. It is like Israel. Zakafanana ne Israel. After the Holocaust. Ah muchure mekura wakwa ukuya. The killing of 6 million Jews. Ah pakaura iwa ma Jude 6 million. She now come back. Ano chidzoka zvino. Empty handed. Asina kana chana cho. Saying my ideas have failed. Ah chitifungwa dzangu dzese dzakunda. I thought I could prosper among the nations of the world. But I have failed. I'm coming back. So he is now coming directly to the Jews. Because the redemption of Ruth is not a direct kick. But it is indirect. He redeems Naomi. And by redeeming Naomi, then Ruth comes as an attachment. So he's coming to redeem Israel. But we, the faithful, gentle people full of faith and loyalty, very, very loyal. And they were faith. With faith. That can easily catch. Amen. Amen. All right. Zaganaka. Why does he say the church is finished? I say what it care care pay. We have come to the seventh church age. Tashika pa zera re. Do bana perra ga machechi pa. That's where the church age is. Akuna there's no further thing. Ah uh, there is nothing beyond that. And his face as it were the sun. Ah uh, chaka chaka ita se. And his feet as the pillars uh, of choka zake. Ah uh, se shongwe moto. You remember that angel in Revelation chapter 1? Same thing. Angel is a messenger. He is a messenger to Israel. The church has been raptured. See, now all fixing to be raptured. You catch that? He comes for his church. Now watch. And he had in his hand a little book. Open. And here it is. It was closed. In chapter 5. It was closed. And sealed. Now in chapter 10. It's open. It's been open. Since that time of the sealing. We are getting into it tonight. Now the book is open. A little book in his hand. It was open. The sun is the pillars. Wait just a minute. Let me start back reading. Here. And he had in his hand a little book. Open and he set his right foot upon the sea. And his left foot upon the earth. And he cried with a loud voice. As when a lion roars. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Over here, he is a lamb. Where is he a lamb? To the church. He is the lamb with seven horns and seven eyes. But to the Jews, he is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And when he cried, seven thunders uttered their voice. Listen, and John, who had been commissioned to write what he saw. So the apostle and prophet picked up his pen to write it. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voice, I was about to write and I heard their voice from heaven saying, seal up those things. Things which the seven thunders uttered and write them not. Now that's 
what we don't know that's yet to be revealed it's not in the holy scripture what them thunders you say because he was told don't write it and the angel which I saw stand up on the sea and upon the earth lift up his hands to heaven now listen and swear by him that liveth forever and ever who created the heavens and the things that are there and the things in the earth and the things therein, there should be time no longer. Watch here is the verse uh, I want to get to. Has it been time no longer? By the time that happens, is at the end time. So John was told, don't write it. But, in the day, of the voice of the seventh angel when he shall begin to sound the mystery of God should be finished as he has declared to his servants the prophet so he is a promise that what you, are, what you are forbidden to write is to hide it from the devil is to hide it from the common man but the same anointing would come upon the seventh angel and the revelation would come to him because that book was now open he is God of secrets. He is God of mysteries. And that mystery does not remain a mystery. There comes a time when he reveals it. So in paragraph 37 he says, paragraph 37, Now see, the mystery of this seven sealed book will be revealed at the sounding of the seventh angel's message. That's the message that you are gathered here for. That's the message that you are Can I only a refugee if you are a refugee in the message? With the refugee status. With the refugee status. But as soon as your own country is, is now at peace, you go back. We are talking of citizens. Now, at the beginning of the sounding of the message, the mystery of God should be finished. At that time, now we will notice the book of the mystery of God is not revealed until the seventh angel's message is sounded. Now these points will be important in the seals. I'm sure because it must be every bit tied together. Now it's wrought mysterious because no man nowhere knows it. God alone, Jesus Christ. See? Now, but it's a book, a mysterious book. It's the book of redemption. We will get into that in a little while. And now, we know that the book of redemption will not be thoroughly understood. It's probed it through six church ages. But at the end, when the seventh angel begins to sound his mystery, he winds up all the loose ends. That this probed it and the mystery comes down from God as the word of God and reveals the entire 
entire revelation of God. Then the Godhead and everything else is settled. All the mysteries, serpent seeds, and whatever more is to be revealed. Now you see, I'm not, I'm not just making up. That's what it's thus saith the Lord. I'll read it to you out of the book. The sounding of the seventh angel's message. The mystery of God should be finished. That's been declared by his holy prophets. That's the prophets who has wrote the word. At the sounding of the seventh church age. The last church age. All the loose ends. That through these church ages. Has been propped at. Will be wound up. Together. And when the seals are broke and the mystery is revealed, down comes the angel, the messenger, Christ, setting his foot upon the land and upon the sea with a rainbow over his head. Now remember, this seventh angel is on earth at that time of this coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just as John was giving his message, the same time that Messiah came in the days, John knew he would see him because he was going to introduce him. And we realize that in the scriptures, over in Malachi 4, there is to be a one like, like Elijah to whom the word of God can come to. And he is to reveal by the Holy Spirit all the mysteries of God and restore the faith of the children back to the faith of the apostolic father. Restore back all these mysteries that's been probed at through this denomination of years. Now, that's what the word says. I'm just responsible for what it says. It's written. It's right. That's what it is. Now we see that the seven sealed book now is the mystery of redemption. It's a book of redemption from God. Now all the mysteries at this time should be finished at the sounding of this messenger. Now here is the angel on earth and another angel mighty angel come down. See this angel was an earthly angel messenger but here comes down from heaven a rainbow covenant see only Christ it could be just like it was in Revelation chapter 1 standing in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks with a rainbow to look upon as Jasper right and Sadias, and here he returns back in chapter 10. After the coming time, that all, all the mysteries to be finished, and the seals are to be broke, and proclaiming that it's time no more. And he said, when the seventh angel has begun to sound, then the mystery should be finished. And the time for the angel to appear. We are close somewhere, that's right. Now notice the seven seals. Holds the mystery of the book. Until we can see what those seven seals have sealed in, we are only presuming them things. 
Because as I have told you this morning, upon my little message, God hiding his business. We are sure to miss the thing unless it is absolutely genuinely revealed by the Holy Spirit and vindicated by the same. Now, what we have been reading, it puts us in the picture of the whole drama of chapter 5. It is the day of redemption. Right, listen to this. We are back to Ruth and Naomi. Are you listening? During that saga, during development, uh, during this time, Ruth had become anxious. Uh, Ruth anger anxious. She went Akashanda. and wanted the redemption. She was told by Naomi, Naomi. Let's seal up the deal. Mark where he lies down. Uh, when it's dark and late, creep then quietly. When the man has, has taken some wine, do you hear what I'm saying? Uh, what were they planning now? Uh, they were planning Jambanja. Let's seal the deal. When this man has taken some wine, be right there and ask him to become your husband. In confusion, in that confusion, uh, that thing will be reversed. Uh, when it's like that, it will not be reversed anymore. Uh, that's what they plan. Uh, there are things that happen when women are on their own. Woman to woman. Um, she said, Watch thyself therefore. Uh, and anoint thee. Uh, and put thy rain upon thee. And get thee down to the floor. But make not thyself known unto the men until he shall have done eating and drinking. And it was to be when he lieth down that thou shalt mark the place where he shall lie and thou shalt go in and uncover his feet. Uh, one of these uh, and lay down he, and he will tell thee what thou shalt do. And she said unto her, all that thou sayest unto me, I will do. This is local knowledge. Now, anywhere you go, if you go into any place, don't go there as a know it all. That's why people perish at Nyanga there. They despise local knowledge. The local people who live by the sea, they know that at certain times. The sea, the tide can just come and then take people out in there. And no matter how good a swimmer you are, that tide will take you down. Thought, no, I'm an I'm a Olympic gold medalist. I've broken world records. Just listen to what we are saying. So uh, Ruth was told, listen to what I'm saying. Go and make him know uh, that you are expecting to be redeemed by him. Because he is a kinsman of your late husband. If you say it when he is sober, it's going to look at many things, but when he's kind of drunk, certain levels of inebriation, 
Then she went down to lie on the floor and did according to all that the mother-in-law bed And when Boaz had eaten and drunk, and his heart was merry, he went to lie down at the end of the heap of corn. And she came softly and uncovered his feet and laid her down. And it came to pass at midnight that the man was afraid and he turned himself and behold a woman lay at his feet and he said, Who art thou? And she answered, I am Ruth, thine handmaid. Spread therefore thy skirt over thine handmaid. For thou art a near kinsman. And he said, Blessed be thou of the Lord, my daughter. For thou hast showed more kindness in the latter end than at the beginning, inasmuch as thou hast followed not young men, whether they be rich or poor. You have done things according to our couch. Wagona. You have passed. Of a truth. I'm a near kinsman to your husband. You didn't follow any of these young men, whether rich or poor, but you followed scripturally where you can fit in. Some of the most miserable people we have. They are young men who are reckless when they come to marriage. They marry recklessly. When they marry recklessly, and they said, Did you marry a virgin? Uh, then they said, if, you, if you are a true message believer, these things are connected. There are people who, who do that. If you want to be able to do that, you want to be able to do that. You want to be able to do that. And you are a, a man, so I think marry a clean girl. That's it. Of course, no. Uh, those are that are also going to be mar married by a similar kind. Uh, oh, no? okay. Uh, then it's difficult. I cash. Yeah. Maning if I don't have a priest in Israel, as if I disqualify you. Quite any height can I wait can I chicoro vines, Urimure Vere. Many people wanted to be priests in Israel, in Israel, but they were disqualified because they were not Levites. But my friend is a Levite. Your friend can be a priest. Ah, my father's, my mother's brother is a Levite. You don't have to force anything in the message. Uh, what, what am I saying? 
This is actually the message. It's not an issue of gathering men power and so forth and so forth. The man must be perfectly called for what he is doing. The sword that Brother Branham received, it fitted his hand. Brother Branham would be a prophet. He was not even allowed to smoke. Not even once. Uh, God refused. Don't, don't defile yourself in any way. Don't smoke or drink or defile yourself in any way because I've got a work for you to do. That's a prophet. About these to Nigeria to pick up some Jews and they come back a prophet. My prophets. Jeremiah was told. Before you were conceived in your mother's womb, I ordained you to be a prophet. I want to say that I chaka nyuka nungo erika na ngo muka oguti doda kuita ai wai wai. Not this chaka nyuka and uh, things one uh, one ngo nyuka nyuka. No. In this modern time when everything can be. Ah, mungua ino ema ema zwane kuti zunzwe. If a man can decide to ato ogutam zima ofu to shoto pera shagada. Ah, a man can. You and your bad or the other. Ah, kuam kazi. You and your bad. Into the dish ojai. Yeah, that's it. In the days of these kingdoms of iron and clay, according to Daniel chapter 2, verse 44, in the days of these kingdoms, that's when there will be a stone hood without hands. That's where they are. And in the days of these kings, shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to another. But it shall break in pieces. And consume all these kingdoms. And it shall stand forever. For as much as thou sowest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, the gold, the great God have made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. The dream is certain and the interpretation thereof sure. The the, the the, judge, the, the, the dream that the king dreamt. What good was it without Daniel? Daniel. gold. He would come into the church and talk about the dream. Uh, and talk about the dream. And iron. Uh, the dream. Uh, let's talk and and they and they break into pieces right without a vision to uh, interpret a vision there will be a kind of interpretation the only way a vision can be interpreted is by another vision now listen and say look at me Paul, Paul was under the lion anointing which is the lion of the tribe of Judah. The anointing that came upon Paul was the anointing of the prophetic. That's why Brother Branham says the pillar of fire that last appeared to Paul never appeared again until in the days of the seventh angel. Why? 
Because after the lion anointing, there came the ox anointing. And then came the men anointing. But the revelation could only come in the eagle anointing. That is where the prophet Elijah appears. Because God does not make his sun shine at midnight. Kungoti pakati pe usiku rungere kana kuti bhara akuita aiwa. Ano mirira mangwanani rokugamana. There was no prophet. Hanga pasi na mprofita. Kuvira bana Agabas. Akuba from Agabas. Pakapera Agabas. Mukati mese on the were people that were spiritual. Ah uh, all in between there were spiritual people. That were working yes. spirituals. Ah uh, amen. But none was a vindicated prophet. The promise was at the very end. I will send you the prophet Elijah. And he will be a prophet. Not a gift of prophecy. Down through the ages there were gifts of prophecy. But a prophet like Isaiah, like Isaiah. Jeremiah, there was promised one. And if a prophet is not vindicated, if he's not vindicated, check his signature. It's like a letter or a check without a signature. There it is. Very right, guys. Good. Whatever we are saying. Uh, let's go with it. Remember what I said we are preaching about? The unchangeable. The unchangeable program. program program is of the unchanging God. The program, uh, program has been. As we are going to read from the message, Christ is the mystery of God revealed. What has been been the program? If you understand these things, you will understand where we are and what we ought to be doing. Servant to a message. As message believers. Right, listen to this, paragraph 101. Christ is the mystery of God revealed. Right, don't go very well. Now for a text uh, I want to take out there. And this is for a text and basing it upon the entire Bible. Bible. But I want to use this title. title Christ in. is the mystery of God revealed. Christ being the mystery of God revealed. Now I took it and as Torah in order as a Sunday school lesson. Ah, uh, Sunday school lesson. Where are we there? All right, pizza tone. Kwananda mira ndiku tuchukiza. Right. So we could all read together Kuri and tu- have this fellowship together. Kuri tu erenge pamuchete, tuwa nekuyana na ukupamuchete. Now, I think we are reading together. Maka tasa. Ah, tu erenge pamuchete. Now God's today. secret. Ah, chakawanzi ka chamwani. Mystery. Ah, chakawanzi ka. Here before the world began. Changa na chonyika isati ya wako. Now back in the back part of God's mind. Ah, zinotika zokera. So azuri mfungwa zamani. There was something. Panga pane chumetiri. That he was trying to. And was going to achieve. And he had a motive in doing it. In order to let himself be expressed. Do you see the motive of God? To let himself be expressed. Because first, there wasn't even a moon, a star, atom, atom, molecule, molecule, or anything. He was God. But he exactly wasn't God at that time. Because God is an object of worship. And there wasn't nothing to worship him. So in his great mind, he wanted these attributes to be expressed. And in him was love. In him was to be a father. In him was to be his son. In him was to be 
a savior. In him was to be a healer. And all these great attributes that we see already expressed, they were in God. So, my opinion, the first thing he was, he made was angels. And when they worshipped him, that made him God. And he started from there. As in previous messages. I've tried to explain it. Break it down. And now then when angels began to worship him, that was before there was even a molecule in the earth. There was nothing. It was all darkness. There wasn't no sun, no moon, no stars, no, no nothing. Then he was God. As he asked Job, where was you when I laid the foundation of the world? When the morning stars sang together, the sons of God shouted for joy. See now, where were you? See, that was way back before the earth. Now God, paragraph 105, now God had a purpose and a hidden mystery and that's what I want to speak on to this morning. The hidden mystery of God that he had in his mind before the world ever began. And how that it's unfolded itself down to this present hour that we are living in. Then you will understand clearly then. You see I believe what is being done. God's great mystery. How it's a secret. He kept it a secret. Nobody knows nothing about it. Even the angels didn't understand it. See? He didn't reveal it. That's the reason. Under our seven mystery. When the seventh seal was opened, there was silence. Jesus, when he was on earth, they wanted to know when he would come. He said, no, even the son don't know when it's going to happen. See, God has this all to himself. It's a secret. And that's the reason there was silence in heaven for a space of half an hour. And the seven thunders uttered their voices. And John was forbidden to write it. See, the coming of the Lord. That's one thing he hasn't revealed yet of how he will come and when he will come. It's a good thing that he doesn't. See? But he has showed it or revealed it in every type that's in the Bible. Therefore, the entire Bible is the revelation of God's mystery in Christ. Um, Amen. The entire Bible is an expression of one God that God had one purpose he wanted to achieve in the entire Bible and all the acts of the believers in the Bible has been in type and expressing what God's great goal is. And now in this last day, he has revealed it and shows it. And God's help, well, you will see it right here this morning. What the Lord has had in his mind all along and has expressed it. 
Therefore, you can see the great meaning of what's been to know to know this and then try to bring it to the people. And then you, you I, I haven't went into the details to try to explain it. As God has revealed to me. Do you hear what the prophet is saying? Now, Gino, if you want to mark this down, I got so many places. I want to read from. In the book of St. Luke, 24th chapter. Uh, Luke 24. St. Luke, you uh, find Luke. out. It is the two of the apostles uh, on the road to Emmaus. And Jesus stepped out after his resurrection. And they were on their way on the road to over and to Emmaus. Going along the road. Thinking and talking. And weeping on account of his death. And how they seen him suffer for what they had thought was of no value at all. But hey, Papa. Catch that. Here is apostles, disciples. They are going to Emmaus. They are grieving. They are weeping about the suffering of Jesus. Do you know what was the problem? They had not understood his mission. They really thought he came to heal the people. He came to solve the problems. He came to bring a better life. But he had come to redeem. He had come to be the kinsman redeemer. To die for the people. They were sad. And yet that was the greatest achievement. What had happened? He, he, God had become kinsman to human beings. He had become the second Adam. Adam the first Adam had sold out. He had failed. And he lost his inheritance. He lost the title deeds. He lost the position. He lost the authority. He lost the image. He lost the power. He became a vagabond. He became a vagabond. And as God was watching, Adam's race, suffering, needing a redeemer, then there could be found no redeemer because no man on earth would be worth to redeem because everyone has got his own fault. To begin with the way we are born, we are born in sin and shaped in iniquity and we come in the world speaking lies. That is why no one was found on earth. But in heaven, there was found the Son of God. He said, I will go and I will redeem them. I will pay the price. He became a sin. He took the place of a sinner. The first man he died for. The first beneficiary of his death was Barabbas. He was healed. Because Barabbas was about to die. Then they chose to kill Jesus. Barabbas was guilty. Jesus was innocent. Pilate was hoping that because Jesus was innocent, the people would say, let Jesus go. But if they had let Jesus go, Barabbas was going to die. But not only Barabbas, but you as well, and me as well, and Peter as well, and John as well. 
and all the human race. So there are things that can be painful to human beings. But glorious in the presence of God. So these people were sorrowing. And they were really worried. They were real good brothers. They took their Lord and crucified him and they were going there weeping. And he stepped out from the roadside and began to talk to them about Christ. He said, What did he say? Uh, did he say, How are you, chef? What did they say? Oh, fools. Oh fools and is slow to understand. Don't you know that all the prophets and the Psalms, see what was he was doing? Identifying himself to these apostles that all of the prophets and all of the Psalms and everything else was him. Expressed. And now the reason I never took to preach this morning was because I thought in teaching we would understand it. Better than just to take a text and and skip over it we would just teach it. Now, he was saying that all the sons and all the prophets spoke of him. Well, there, therefore, that shows that all of the Old Testament and all of the New Testament and all of the psalms, the singing, the songs that were sung, were sung of him. That's what I preached all the time. It's one issue. Trying to tell you, whether it's a parable, whether it's a song, whether it's a drama. That's where I get all these things. It all builds up to one thing. That after Jesus died. And resurrected the people who should have known, they still did not know what was happening. They thought this man was unlucky. Uh, this man, uh, people uh, cried about him. When people don't understand the message, this is why we have all the time. The last message was preached in 1965. We have had more than 50 years. But you will be surprised how many people have really rejoiced over the message and go through it until you get your full benefits in there. There is people who read the Bible verse by verse. Uh, he read it verse. He jumps to another verse. 30 years are in Christ. Uh, 30 years being a Christian. Uh, many things that are in the Bible they don't understand. understand. Uh, only the verse read in the church, that is what they know. When things get difficult, uh, they start running from uh, running everywhere. Uh, they don't know what to do. And yet you have it there. Uh, this prophet taught us uh, that the word will defeat the devil. Anytime. Anywhere. Under any circumstances. But you must know the word. If you don't know it, how are you going to use it? If you give a man 
a, a good a good rifle uh, with a 20, 20 round magazine at uh, ma magazine 20 round you know pinda mabara 20 uh, a magazine that can carry oh, 20 so she janga mire mire ipa napo and you say say wait here pane makudo ari kune sa stereo ah there are baboons that are uh, being a problem muni <sighs> kana uchitaura zo kuti zvinonzai unozoda yanenge achigotsira panozoya makudo hazoto anenge achita sei akadzingirira nechiti achita kurovana ichocho kusvikira rimwe gudo razo chitora hozo ndo achati kwa 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 ne gudo ya kuzotisa bata kuti message ichi ucharoa ne message iyo ne makudo akaramba message vanokurova ne message iyoyi vachitaura kuti brother brana makati zvakati muso wakati iwo akutaura kuti ho vakadaro ne Uye munhu akanga achitsvaga kuti aone simba revanhu ripapi ndobva ari ona akati all right naika understand the message lest you are akari ona simba iko that have researched about this message and they will give to you these are the quotations to confuse you ndo ku confuse they will confuse you zviri kuita zvakana are we getting it Uh, we, we want to come to Why I am putting so many quotations? There are people who are going to read in this way. They just uh, preach Do from there. Yeah. Those are the people I was, I was trying to say. The dream of Nebuchadnezzar. Ah, Nebuchadnezzar. Ma scripture uh, Those are scriptures. Yes. But the person that do to read Daniel ipapo. Daniel sinda preach. What was it going to help? Those who wanted them them vision are in Bible as zvinotsanangwa zvezvi kana pasina ari mumweya wechakanyora chacho anozotsanangura chaizvi kuti bataizvi ndezvi kure hwaizvi zvinongopfura the same with the visions in the bible we need someone to actually explain that this is what it means otherwise you are going to miss it we were listening to a video that was video. in portuguese ah yanga iri portuguese Shai ngofamba nazo akana kuti uze kuti zviri kunzi kuti unozive what would you understand what the man is saying Hanzi ichashikangwe kuti achati tiverengere onza handi nakufunda time will come when people say read it for us and you say i didn't go to school kana akafunda kuti ah but zvakavharwa ka zvinhu zvacho ah if he is has gone to school then he says i don't understand these things god has closed. always Let's look at Isaiah 28. And epa na Isaiah 28. Tipo verenga mchana. Ah just to I'm not being funny I'm trying to challenge people from this church kuti like hai kuita sevamwanhu vakapata vanomhanya mhanya zvese zese kwese kwese pakangoya shirika ngoti go 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 pana apa vatomhanya vatera ipapo vozobvunza kuti go hero spoken word chaiyo makaona hereki yacho kuti zvakavanzika zvichazururwa munguva yemutumwa wechinomwe nokuti anenge ari muprofita nokuti anenge ari pasi pechizoro chechapungu i'm not being funny i just want you to understand this message as it was brought by the prophet kizhinonzi kenneth hagin chokuita se what is this kenneth hagin akamboti kuti madzimai anopfeka mutrousers ah what did he say about women that put on trousers vakagera msoro Uh, not even a way kana utomboza kuti pane zvinokanganiswa ipapo ah he doesn't know anything about it kwa ano zive what does he know right indicator dza chi french mungandi pe mosha ah uh, if i fail to speak french are you going to find fault in me kungangodi seka kuti ah my way you can not have gone chimara undo kunza kuti ndayo ndichi gonero kuti zvangu that doesn't know french how should i know french you should not gone chinya chinyanja zvora kuti wakapusa it just means kuti hauna kukurira kumalawi kana kunotaura munhu wega wega hane calling yake you have go every person has a different calling they say this big man cannot fly kashirika diki kachibhuruka and this kashirika kabere kuti kabhuruka ndo saka kachibhuruka A bed was created to fly that's why it There can fly things that you were born to do pane zvinhu zvakaberekwa iwe kuti do those things ukatadza kuita zvinhu izvo zvakaberekerwa kuita that you were born to do that's where the problem is everyone that comes into this world a munhu wega wega ano yapanyika pano uri pano kuitira chinangwa if you are working for a man kana uri kushandira munhu ask him what are my duties a mubvunze kuti basarangu changamire ndere ipano 
Uh, then they say you are a watchman. Uh, you sit at the gate. You go around and see that uh, nothing is coming in. No foreigner must come in here. You are the one who opens the gate. But before you open the gate, you ask me first to say, so and so, can I let them in? Uh, if it's someone that ran away from school marara, and they hear that you, are, you have gone to sleep even that one who go and sleep also. Then someone comes a phone, he has phoned arikuya, coming to get to the gate, uh, there's a guard. Way. Oshika by a guard way, guard way. Oshika guard way, guard way, guard way. Guard way. He phones you. Oh, buru gama upstairs. You come down what from your upstairs. Get. You end up getting. Oto oto no chaga magi kuna guard. And then you go and get the keys from Chinta the guard. Chinda nemata ondo. Ah, danga na barua nemdu. Oh, bango chin and and ango. Those are our guys at school. That's why you ran away from school. You are even running away from the job that you are the supposed to do. Uh, after that, you are going to be a medal. God is good. I normally don't want to come back to a message. I want you to understand that when we get to these things, this is re my real area. In the message, Masterpiece, Masterpiece, you can stand. You can uh, go through this step if you so wish. You will find that there is some truth here. In the masterpiece. Uh, this message, masterpiece. In paragraph 79. Paragraph 79. It says the perfect image of the, per, the perfect image. Uh, the God man. God in and morphe had changed from supernatural to vision. And the vision was projected into the image. And the image was smitten so that the supernatural could taste death, the feeling of death. God's perfect masterpiece. He could not do it in Moses. He could not do it in the prophets. Isaiah, who was sold with souls till he was sold to pieces. He could not do it in the prophets that were stoned. He could not do it because he, could, he couldn't feel it. There was a, just a portion of him. But in this perfect masterpiece, he was the fullness of the God and bodily. He could not only project Moses. He could project his entire being into his person and taste death for the whole human race. God's perfect masterpiece, God. So inspired by seeing it, he became the redeemer of all ages to speak for those in the background who had been before and now. All promises was met in him. He was the perfection of the perfection. All types was fulfilled in him, our kinsman redeemer in Ruth and Boaz, our lawgiver from Mount Sinai, our prophet from the wilderness, as he come from the mountain, as he come from the wilderness, as he come from eternity and become man, the perfect image. God down through the ages, hewing away by the patriarchs and made his platform, brought them up from the different things that he would lay this foundation upon. Upon this, he began to build his word, the prophets. And then finally, come out with the perfect prophet, the perfect foundation, the perfect vision God had. And now in order to, in order for this to speak, he is the word. And for the word to speak, he must come into the image. And then for the image to speak, it's got to be smitten. He comes into the image, then in order to speak the perfect redeemer, all of the types of the Old Testament was met in, in him. As I said the other day, Jehovah of the Old Testament is Jesus of the New. That is Yehibah. Let's leave it there. The Jehovah of the Old Testament is Jesus of the New Testament.
We are blessed to live in this hour. To know what we know. To hear what we hear. To know that the title did. That book of redemption was given back to men. A man can be so poor and yet being rich but not knowing no harm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Baba Vedu Variko Kum Sorokudenga. Shogura Paridwa Nas. Baba Zino Shamisa. Kutivana venues a chukwa diva no weam shoko in. Wongo itarekungo browser browser. Wongo itarekungo bata bata. Woshaika kuti chiko chirukumbo yate tika. Upenyu oreka kuchinja. Matambu tziko ndoo enda mbeli. Zosha misa kutiko mwari varipi. Ko. Amuna ere physician. Is there no balm in Gilead? Hallelujah. Baba wakanaka. Mwari wenyashi. Wona iva na venyu vatugana. Wona iwa na venyu wa isa mauko mdenga. Wona iwa uya mberi. Ngoyo yavo ya tari sapasi. Zecho kwa di mchiri mwari. Mchiri mwemweche teyo zuro. Nas ne kusingapeni. Baba. Kunyangu angasiri kurevesa. Nda kumbiro oma sikata hana. Taurahini mwoyo wake u. Taura inaye baba arewese. Asanga nene mi. Muprogramu yenyu. Isinga chinje. Kunyangu akatarisa. Arikunze kwenjika. Kunyangu asiriku ya pani. Muri mumweche teyo baba. A God without borders. A God without distance. Of no distance. You are the same God. Lord Jesus Christ. Their pockets are empty. Their coffers are empty. Their stomachs are hungry. They are thirsting for life. Lord, you are the giver of all good gifts. You never, you never let down any sincere man or a woman, even children. Father, I am asking this afternoon, I am committing them to you, Lord. I am committing them to you, Lord. May you touch. May you heal. May you bless. May you provide in the name of Jesus Christ. May your children receive and I ask everyone to receive their heart's desire. In the name of Jesus Christ. Satan, you are a liar. You are a liar. You are a liar. You can't change the program of God. You cannot temper with it. It is God who created these children, who created every human being. He created every soul in the name of Jesus Christ. Right now, right now, Satan depart, depart, depart. Touch not my anointed ones and do my prophets no harm. You are a liar. Depart, depart, depart. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we want to thank you for the preaching of this word. We want to thank you, Lord. We want to thank you. Restore the virtue that has come out of our pastor and out of our deacon here who was interpreting. Lord, may you bless their families. May you protect them. We realize the devil does not want anyone to mention, to mention any good thing about you. But here we are, Lord. We will mention it. Anyhow, it has been said. Anyhow, hallelujah. 
my brother, my sister, before you stand up, before you rise from where you are kneeling, receive. Receive. In the name of Jesus, receive. Receive. In the name of Jesus, receive. I ask all these things in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.